Hey folks, and welcome to all my technivores out there. I am Technivorous, and today we are going to be doing some mods for the Anet ET4. This is the first video in a playlist we're going to be doing of mods specifically for this printer, and the first mod we're going to be doing is a fan mount uh, blower for the part cooling fan. So we're going to jump right into it. I'll show you the model that I got, and we will get right to installing it on the printer. Alright, so we're going to be replacing the fan cover for the part cooling fan on the ANET ET4 here. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is ensure that we have our tools ready. I have already printed the part. You can see it here. This is it. It's pretty simple. Uh, just like the other part, it's going to fit in right here. But we need to remove the bottom two screws from the fan that is on the right side of the hot end. So in order to do that, we're going to grab our smallest Allen key here. Let me dig it out. Oh, that one's the second smallest. Let's get the smallest Allen key. Where is it at? Mm, there it is. Now, this is a, a tiny slot. Um, to get into that machine screw back there with the rounded end of this Allen key, it does work pretty, pretty easily. Um, but you might need to apply a little bit of pressure in one direction or another to get it to grip. Uh, this particular Allen key that I'm using is really well used so that rounded side is a little bit worn down, a little bit stripped. So uh, you should have less trouble getting yours out than I'm having right now. Basically though, once we get these two machine screws out right here, uh, we're going to place them into the other fan and then place the fan back on. Now you wanna be very careful not to lose these screws. They are very tiny. So as I finally get one out, what I'm going to do is place it into the hole in the new fan shroud just to kind of keep it there. Uh, the hole is a little bit tight for the screw, so it will have to be screwed through, but once I thread it in a little bit ways, it will stay put while I take the other screw off. That way I don't lose anything. It'll be kind of hard to lose this bright yellow piece um, anyway. So here we are. We'll thread this through the first hole just a little bit there. Get it to keep its place. You want to make sure that it goes through straight and not crooked. Uh, and then we're going to go back for the other screw. I'm going to take the other screw out just the same as I did the first. And I will again begin to pass it through the new fan mount um, just to kind of get it pre threaded. That way I can hold it up against where I want it. And you'll see I'll be able to just drive the machine screws right in. So this particular fan shroud that I'm taking off is a little bit further away from the hot end than the one that I'm putting on. The one that I'm putting on comes up pretty snugly almost up against the hot end so uh, very very close to touching the actual nozzle but not quite so you want to be sure that your machine screws are seated properly because if you don't screw them down all the way um, it can wobble and that can either catch on a print or it can get pushed into the nozzle and there's nothing worse than melting your fan shroud to your nozzle so Finally got this other one off here, got the fan shroud off, you can see. And uh, it's a little bit hard to tell from the angle, but that is a 3D printed part. Uh, Anet is notorious for putting 3D printed parts on their printers, um, which I don't mind. I mean, I end up modding them out and putting my own 3D printed parts on there anyway, so I can't really complain about quality because that's what I tend to use. So we're going to go ahead and pre-thread this machine screw as well just a little bit. We'll give this one another notch as well. And basically what you're going to want to do to ensure that it's easier to turn uh, when you're pushing up against the fan is to go all the way through the hole. So I'm going to drive this screw until I can see the tip of it coming through the other side of the fan. Uh, once you see that here, I'm going to drive it a little bit further and you can see it sticking down. Uh, right below there and I'm just going to back it off so it's pretty much flush with the mount. That way I know as soon as I start screwing it back in, it will go right into the hole. And we're gonna do the same thing with this one as I, I overdrive it, see it sticking out there a little bit. And then we just back it up so it's flush. Then we're gonna pop it on. Uh, it is a really good fit. Pops right in. And now we just need to gently and slowly guide the machine screws back in. So the fit is pretty close to exact. It is pretty close to perfect but you do need to hold the fan shroud in the proper position while pushing the screw through in order to line up with that hole back there because there is 
not only the hole in the flange of the fan itself that we're, that we're screwing into, but behind the fan, the uh, sheet metal case that goes around the hot end itself has a bolt hole as well. So we're not we're mounting the fan shroud to the housing itself through the fan. So we're gonna screw through all three items. And if you don't get into that hole on the sheet metal, the plate there, um, it's gonna start pushing the fan away and you need to be careful so as not to pry anything or break anything. If you're just gentle, you give it a little wiggle, it should pop right in the hole. And then from there you can tighten it down. So I have the left side here, or the front side, I should say, pretty well tightened. Uh, we're gonna give it a couple more turns and then I'm gonna jump over and we'll, we'll finish on the back there. So, and again, as I'm doing this, I'm checking underneath to make sure that it's not making contact with the hot end itself, that it's not touching the nozzle. Uh, you can see as it wiggles there a little bit that it comes really, really close to touching the nozzle. And I know from looking at it, it looks like the heat block is right up against the fan shroud. It is actually not touching it. It is a very, very minute gap there, but there is a gap there. So. Um, that is absolutely necessary, otherwise you're going to end up with a blob of goo if there's any plastic touching your hot end. You don't want that. So, uh, part cooling doesn't really work so well when all the uh, air is blowing out the side of your melted fan vent. So, we want to direct it where we want it to go and keep it in position in order to utilize it to its maximum potential. I'm going to go ahead and finish tightening this guy in here. We are getting pretty close to wrapping this up. Mod, this as far as mods go, this is one of the simpler ones. I mean, this can be changed out uh, in a matter of minutes. Uh, it seems like it's taking me a little longer than it should here, but uh, once you try a couple of these and work this hole a little bit, it's gonna come a little bit quicker, a little bit easier. Um, that being said, if you do this too much or you're not careful when inserting and reinserting the machine screws, you can very easily damage that hole and make it so your fan does not sit properly and just kind of hangs there. Um, and that is not good. Also, if you over tighten the screws, it is very easy to break that little flange that you're screwing through on the fan. Um, on this particular model, that's not really a big deal because you're going to continue screwing into that hole and behind the fan and the pressure should keep the fan pinched where it needs to be. On the Ender 3, this bottom fan doesn't actually go into the sheet metal on the side. Um, so if you break that flange off, you're gonna have a really hard time getting uh, a fan mount to stay there. So just get a quick look at it here, make sure everything is square. Looks like it's far enough away. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple minor adjustments. Just give it a little wiggle and make sure nothing is loose. And it looks like I can tighten it up just a little bit more here. And there we have it. I think that's about as tight as it's gonna go. So I'm gonna give it one more quick peek here. And I'm going to jump down to the LCD screen. You can't see me doing this right now, but the LCD screen is just to the bottom right of the screen I am getting ready to start a print. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit print and scroll down to select my model. And we are printing another surgical mask ear protector and hit print. And that's basically it guys, it's as simple as that. Removing those two bottom screws, taking off the old fan shroud and replacing it with the one of your choice. Now this is a simple mod that directs the airflow a little bit better than the stock mod that they had on there, at least in my opinion. Uh, but there are several options and variants to choose from and you can even make your own. So I highly suggest playing around with them and seeing what effects they have on your prints because a better fan, better part cooling, tends to lead to better layer adhesion, adhesion between layers on PLA, and uh, it can lead to a lot of nice effects as far as uh, smoother edges, smoother corners, uh, uh, getting rid of some of what looks like vibrational ringing, but can actually tend to be uh, variance in temperature of your filament as it's going down. Um, it, it, as with everything else, I mean, the laws of thermodynamics dictate that things are gonna expand and contract as they heat and cool. Um, this just allows the cooling to be more even across the part 
which allows for a more uniform print and it overall looks a little bit better. So I do have a print going right now and when it comes off, I'll show it to you before we take off. And here we have it, another pretty simple print. This is another surgical mask, a tension relief strap for uh, ear protectors. Uh, real quick model, this guy prints in about 28 minutes by itself and came off the ET4 pretty nicely. Uh, got a little bit smoother top surface with that new fan on there than before and I'm very happy with the upgrade. So definitely check into adding a new fan shroud to your ET4. The one that comes on it is printed as is and it does function pretty well um, but there are some variations that I think do a little bit better job. So. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, smash the bell for notifications, and as always, we would appreciate it if you leave a like on this video. That's how YouTube knows to recommend our video to other viewers, and thanks a lot. As always, this channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. That's going to be it for this video. As always, I am Technivorous, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our main channel page where we do a free giveaway for our subscribers every month. So far, we've given away things like a Capricorn PTFE tubing kit and spools of filament. So the giveaway videos are always pinned to our main channel page. So all you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment on the giveaway video for the current contest. Feel free to check out this video right here. YouTube picked it for my content just for you. And if you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button right here. So what are you waiting for? Become a technivore now. Thanks again. Technivorous out.